Hey everyone, this syndrome is on Guillain Barre syndrome. Guillain Barre syndrome is an autoimmune disorder and it is thought to be a post infectious polyneuropathy. It mainly involves motor nerves but also sensory and sometimes autonomic nerves can be involved. This syndrome affects people of all age and is not hereditary. The onset of weakness in Guillain Barre syndrome usually follows in any specific infection by approximately 10 days. The original infection might have caused only GI symptoms, especially Campylobacter jejani, and it might be respiratory tract or systemic disease. Guillain Barre syndrome may follow administration of vaccines against rabies, influenza, and the conjugated meningococcal vaccine. Initial symptoms include numbness and parasthesia followed by weakness, radicular back pain and myalgia are common in the initial stage and affected children can be very irritable due to this pain. Weakness usually begins in the lower extremities and progressively involves the trunk and the upper limbs and finally the bulbar muscles. In most patients, weakness is essentially symmetric. Weakness progresses over days to weeks and the clinical nerve occurring in less than four weeks. Approximately 60% of children lose their ability to walk at some point in their illness, and a small proportion progress to frazid tetraplegia. The maximal severity of weakness is reached by four weeks after onset of the symptom. Bulbar involvement occurs in about 50% of cases and can result in respiratory insufficiency. Dysphagia and facial weakness can be signs of impending respiratory failure because it interferes with saliva control and the swallowing and increases the risk of aspiration. Vocal cord paralysis may cause dyspnea or hoarse voice. The autonomic nervous system is also involved in some cases, such as liability of blood pressure and death rate, which can happen in few patients. So cardiovascular monitoring is important, especially early in the discourse when rapid progression of weakness. The tender reflex are lost in Guillain Barre syndrome usually early in the course. A reflexia is more common, but hyporeflexia might be seen. Of affected children, 10% may retain the reflex route, which causes diagnostic confusion. When we came to types of GBS, there are demyelinating type, axonal type, and the Miller Fisher syndrome. The most common one is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Each type of Guillain Barre syndrome can have their own clinical features, so it is possible to identify which causes the William Barry syndrome in a specific patient by their clinical features and also by investigation. When we came to investigation, the first thing that is important to diagnose GBS is CSF studies. The CSF protein is usually elevated, glucose level is normal, and the WBC count in CSF is normal in GBS. The dissociation between high CSF protein and the lack of cellular response, which is called cytoalbuminologic dissociation in a patient with an acute or subacute polyneuropathy is essential diagnosis of GBS. These findings might not be apparent in the first weeks after the onset of symptoms, so we should have to do LP and CSF analysis after 10 to 40 days of onset of symptoms. The second is imaging. On MRI of the spinal cord in GBS, typical findings include thickening of the cauda cuna and the intrathecal nerve roots with enhancement. On nerve conduction study, motor and sensory nerve conduction velocities are reduced to a variable extent, reflecting the patchy nature of nerve involvement in this disorder. The other is electromyography. Electromyography may show acute denervation of muscle. Regarding treatment, patients in early stage of this acute disease should be admitted to the hospital for observation because the ascending paralysis may rapidly involve respiratory muscles and cause respiratory failure and Atomic instability. The first is supportive care, respiratory support, prevention of pressure sores, nutritional support, pain management, and the prevention of deep venous thrombosis with treatment of secondary bacterial infection is important. Regarding pharmacologic treatment of GBS, patients with milder weakness and a slow progression may be treated expectantly with observation for possible stabilization and spontaneous remission. Severe or rapidly progressive muscle weakness is treated with IVIG. And the plasma pharis 
or other immune suppressive drugs are alternative of IVIG if IVIG is ineffective. Steroids are not effective for weakness but may help with pain. When we came to prognosis, GBS is usually a monophysic illness and the spontaneous recovery begins within 2-3 weeks but can take months. Therapy with IVIG has done recovery but does not alter long-term outcome. As many as 60% become non-ambulant during their illness but most eventually regain full strength. A minority has some residual weakness, most often of the ankle dorsiflexors. flexors. Clinical features predicting a severe course and a slow recovery include cranial nerve involvement, need for ventilatory support and a maximum disability at the time of presentation. Demyelating forms of GBS usually recover more quickly than those with axonal forms, and the tender reflex are usually the last function to recover. Improvement usually follows a gradient opposite the direction of involvement, with bulbar function recovering first and the lower extremity weakness resolving. Bulbar and the respiratory muscle involvement can lead to death if the syndrome is not recognized and treated. Fatigue is the most common long-term residue of William barre syndrome. Relapses occur in about 4% of children with GBS and they are generally responsive to immunomodulatory treatment. This is all about Julian Barre syndrome. Thank you for watching and also for subscribing to the channel.